This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. My question I preferred. Then I'd say, Really? Me too. Asked by the agent which team I supported, I took my cue from her red turtleneck and told her that I was for state. Definitely state. State all the way. It was an answer I would regret for years to come. State, did you say? The agent asked. Yeah, state. They're the greatest. I see. She led me through an unmarked door near the principal's office, into a small, windowless room furnished with two facing desks. It was the kind of room where you'd grill someone until they snapped, the kind frequently painted as to cover the bloodstains. She gestured toward what was to become my regular seat, then continued her line of questioning. And what exactly are they, State and Carolina? Colleges? Universities? She opened a file on her desk, saying, Yes, you're right. Your answers are correct, but you're saying them incorrectly. You're telling me that they're colleges and universities, when actually they're colleges and universities. You're giving me a th sound instead of a nice clear S. Can you hear the distinction between those two different sounds? I nodded. May I please have an actual answer? Uh-huh. Uh-huh is not a word. Okay. Okay what? Okay, I said. Sure, I can hear it. You can hear what? The distinction? The contrast? Yeah, that. It was the first battle of my war against the letter S, and I was determined to dig my foxhole before the sun went down. According to Agent Sampson, a state-certified speech therapist, my S was sibilant, meaning that I lisped. This was not news to me. Our goal is to work together until eventually you can speak correctly, Agent Sampson said. She made a great show of enunciating her own sparkling S's, and the effect was profoundly irritating. I'm trying to help you, but the longer you play these little games, the longer this is going to take. The woman spoke with a heavy Western North Carolina accent, which I used to discredit her authority. Here was a person for whom the word pen had two syllables. Her people undoubtedly drank from clay jugs and hollered for paw when the vittles was ready. So who was she to advise me on anything? Over the coming years, I would find a crack in each of the therapists sent to train what Miss Sampson now defined as my lazy tongue. That's its problem, she said. It's just plain lazy. My sisters Amy and Gretchen were at the time undergoing therapy for their lazy eyes, while my older sister Lisa had been born with a lazy leg that had refused to grow at the same rate as its twin. She'd worn a corrective brace for the first two years of her life, and wherever she roamed she'd left a trail of scratch marks in the soft pine floor. I liked the idea that part of one's body might be thought of as lazy, not thoughtless or hostile, just unwilling to extend itself for the betterment of the team. My father often accused my mother of having a lazy mind, while she, in turn, accused him of having a lazy index finger unable to dial the phone when he knew damn well he was going to be late. My therapy sessions were scheduled for every Thursday at 2.30, and with the exception of my mother, I discussed them with no one. The word therapy suggested a profound failure on my part. Mental patients had therapy. Normal people did not. I didn't see my sessions as the sort of thing that one would want to advertise, but as my teacher liked to say, I guess it takes all kinds— Whereas my goal was to keep it a secret, hers was to inform the entire class. If I got up from my seat at 2.25, she'd say, Sit back down, David. You've still got five minutes before your speech therapy session. If I remained seated until 2.27, she'd say, David, don't forget you have a speech therapy session at 2.30. On the days I was absent, I imagined she addressed the room, saying, David's not here today, but if he were, he'd have a speech therapy session at 2.30. My sessions varied from week to week. Sometimes I'd spend a half-hour parroting whatever Agent Sampson had to say. 
We'd occasionally pass the time examining charts on tongue position, or reading childish, S-laden texts recounting the adventures of seals or settlers named Sassy or Samuel. On the worst of days, she'd haul out her tape recorder and show me just how much progress I was failing to make. My speech therapist's name is Miss Chrissy Sampson. She'd hand me the microphone and lean back with her arms crossed. Go ahead, say it. I want you to hear what you sound like. She was in love with the sound of her own name and seemed to view my speech impediment as a personal assault. If I wanted to spend my life as David Thedareth, then so be it. She, however, was going to be called Miss Chrissy Sampson. Had her name included no S's, she probably would have bypassed her career in therapy and devoted herself to yanking out healthy molars or performing unwanted clitoridectomies on the schoolgirls of Africa. Such was her personality. Oh, come on, my mother said. I'm sure she's not that bad. Give her a break. The girl's just trying to do her job. I was a few minutes early one week and entered the office to find agents...